We look up at the vast, seemingly infinite universe filled with countless stars and galaxies, and a big question pops up. What is consciousness? This question has intrigued humanity, sparking curiosity and wonder. How did this amazing thing, this ability to experience the universe, come from the stuff of space and time? How did the universe, with its vastness and complexity, give rise to something as intricate and profound as consciousness? Is consciousness something only humans have, locked inside our brains? Or is it a phenomenon that extends beyond us, perhaps even beyond our planet? Could it be a bigger part of the universe, woven into the very fabric of reality itself? These are the questions that drive our quest for understanding. These questions have puzzled smart people for a very long time. But now, science is starting to give us some interesting ideas. With advancements in technology and research, we are beginning to peel back the layers of this profound mystery. As a physicist, I love how science explains things. It provides a framework for understanding the world around us, from the smallest particles to the largest galaxies. But I'm also amazed by the big mysteries we still don't understand. The unknown is what makes the journey of discovery so exciting and rewarding. Consciousness is maybe the biggest mystery of all. It challenges our understanding of reality and our place within it. In this video, we'll explore consciousness using science. We'll delve into the latest research and theories that attempt to explain this enigmatic phenomenon. We'll look at the latest research in neuroscience, quantum mechanics and cosmology, checking out different theories that try to explain it. Each field offers unique insights and perspectives. We'll also talk about the soul, something often linked to consciousness, and see if it makes sense with modern science. The intersection of science and spirituality provides a rich ground for exploration. Our guide will be curiosity, a willingness to look at what we know and what we don't know as we try to understand the universe inside us. Together, we'll embark on this journey of discovery, seeking to unravel the mysteries of consciousness. The main mystery of consciousness is what philosophers call the hard problem. This problem, described by David Chalmers, talks about the huge difference between what happens in the brain and what it feels like to be conscious. It's a profound question that has puzzled thinkers for centuries. We can see neurons firing and chemicals flowing, but how do these things create the feeling of being alive and aware? This gap between physical processes and subjective experience is what makes the hard problem so challenging. Neuroscience has made big steps in understanding the brain. We've mapped out regions responsible for various functions and observed how they interact. We know, for example, that the front part of the brain helps us plan and make decisions. This area, known as the prefrontal cortex, is crucial for our ability to think ahead and control our impulses. But even with all we know, the actual feeling of consciousness is still a mystery. It's an experience that eludes complete scientific explanation. It's like trying to explain the taste of chocolate by talking about its ingredients. You can list the components, but that doesn't capture the essence of the experience. You can describe it, but you can't really explain the taste itself. The subjective experience remains unique and personal. This doesn't mean neuroscience isn't important. On the contrary, it's crucial for understanding how the brain works and how it supports our mental functions. It's crucial for understanding how the brain works. By studying the brain, we can learn more about mental health, cognition, and behavior. But we need to remember that consciousness might not just be about neurons firing. It could involve complex interactions that we are only beginning to understand. It could be about how different parts of the brain work together, or even about physics we don't fully understand yet. The enigma of consciousness continues to inspire and challenge us. Because consciousness is so mysterious, some people think it might be connected to quantum mechanics, the science of tiny particles. This idea stems from the fact that our understanding of consciousness is still very limited, and quantum mechanics, with all its peculiarities, offers a new frontier to explore. Quantum mechanics is full of strange things like particles being in two places at once. These phenomena challenge our everyday understanding of reality and suggest that the universe operates in ways we are only beginning to grasp. Could these weird quantum effects be linked to consciousness? This question has intrigued scientists and philosophers alike, leading to various theories and debates. One scientist who thinks so is Roger Penrose. Penrose, a renowned physicist, has spent years studying the mysteries of the mind and the universe. He and Stuart Hameroff came up with the Orch-Ore theory. 
This theory attempts to bridge the gap between the physical brain and the experience of consciousness. This theory says that tiny structures inside brain cells could act like tiny computers, doing things normal physics can't explain. These structures, known as microtubules, might be the key to understanding how consciousness arises. They think these tiny computers could be where consciousness comes from. If true, this would revolutionize our understanding of the mind and its connection to the physical world. While this is interesting, the Orch or theory has some problems. Critics argue that the theory lacks empirical evidence and that the proposed mechanisms are not well understood. One big problem is that quantum effects are very delicate and disappear quickly in the warm, wet environment of the brain. This makes it difficult to see how they could play a significant role in brain function. For quantum computers to work in the brain, something would need to protect them, and we haven't found that yet. Until we do, the connection between quantum mechanics and consciousness remains a fascinating but unproven hypothesis. If consciousness isn't just in the brain, could it be everywhere in the universe? This is the idea of panpsychism, which says that everything, even tiny particles and stars, has some kind of basic consciousness, much simpler than ours. Panpsychism might sound strange, but some scientists and philosophers are starting to like it. One reason is that it's hard to explain how consciousness comes from non-conscious things. If consciousness is already everywhere, this problem goes away. It's not something that appears, it's just there. Another reason comes from integrated information theory. This theory says that anything with integrated information has consciousness. The more integrated information, the more consciousness. This theory doesn't need a specific thing for consciousness to exist in, it could be in anything complex enough. Life, death and the persistence of information. Consciousness is connected to the mysteries of life and death. What happens to our consciousness when we die? Does it disappear or does it continue in some way, maybe as a soul or a pattern of information? Science says that consciousness is linked to the brain. When the brain dies, everything stops including consciousness. There's no scientific proof that consciousness can survive brain death. But just because we haven't found proof doesn't mean it doesn't exist. We might never be able to prove or disprove the existence of a soul or an afterlife. These questions might be beyond science, belonging to philosophy, spirituality, and personal beliefs. Now let's talk about Brian Cox's views, a voice of wonder and skepticism. As a physicist, he has always been amazed by the universe, but he also believes in using evidence and science to understand things. As he has stated previously, when it comes to consciousness, I'm open to ideas, but also skeptical. I find the idea of a quantum soul or a panpsychic universe interesting, but there's no scientific evidence for them. Big claims need big proof, and we don't have that yet. This doesn't mean we should ignore these ideas, Science is about discovering new things, and what seems impossible today might be normal tomorrow. But it's important to know the difference between guesses and proven science. We shouldn't say something is supernatural just because we don't understand it scientifically yet. The Everlasting Mystery Consciousness is still one of the biggest mysteries we face. Science has learned a lot about the brain, but the actual feeling of being conscious is still hard to understand. We've looked at different theories, from neuroscience to quantum consciousness and panpsychism. Each theory gives us a different way to look at this mystery, showing what we know and how much we still don't know. The idea of a soul, often linked to consciousness, is also still being debated. Science can't prove or disprove the existence of a soul, but it helps us understand how the brain creates consciousness and what we can know about what happens after death. Beyond the horizon, continuing the exploration. Trying to understand consciousness is a journey without an end. It takes us to the edge of what we know and makes us ask big questions. Who are we? What is reality? What is our place in the universe? As we keep searching, we need to be open to new ideas and discoveries. The answers might be in surprising places, making us rethink what we believe and explore the unknown. 
The mystery of consciousness shows how amazing the human mind is, how it can question, explore, and be amazed by the universe. It's a mystery that will probably keep us thinking and searching for many years to come, pushing us to understand the universe inside us and the vast universe beyond.